The HP Omen 27Q offers a tasty proposition, a 27-inch form factor with an IPS panel, running a 1440p resolution and a refresh rate of 165Hz, and support for adaptive sync technologies and HDR. All of this at roughly £230 in the UK and only $250 in the US. Indeed, in this review you can see if it's actually worth its price tag. But before proceeding, I would just like to thank AOC for actually sponsoring this video. More on them a little bit later. So jumping straight in, let's talk about this input lag, and yes indeed I had it objectively tested at 0 milliseconds, which really blew my mind. As you'll be able to see from the graph over here, a lot of the other monitors also do a phenomenal job as well, but it's great to see that the 27Q does do well in this department. And while playing a game such as Counter Strike 2, I had absolutely no problems whatsoever when it came to registering my mouse input. Now as for the overall response time, it really depends as to the overdrive mode that you select. There are five different modes that you can select with from level 1 to level 5. Now using the OSRTD tool, I had it objectively tested on the level 1 mode with the average initial time at 7.82. This often translates to the average D2G that the manufacturers claim. Indeed, it's not exactly impressive in this overdrive mode. But if we go to level 2, you can see that the average initial time decreases at 6.2 milliseconds. Still not too shabby, but at level 3 it gets even better at 5.08 milliseconds. Now this mode is the one that I would actually recommend for most users, at least if you're playing casual games. And that is because, as you'll be able to see towards the middle of your screen, the RGB overshoot is absolutely minimal. However, as we go to the level 4 mode, you can see that there's a lot more error that occurs. But on the flip side, the average initial time drops down even further to 3.86 milliseconds, with the percent in window also getting a little bit better. Now you might be tempted to go for the level 5 overdrive mode, but as you'll be able to quickly notice that there is a lot more RGB overshoot error, and indeed this means that the overall visual experience is going to be severely hampered. On the flip side, yet again, the average initial time drops down to 3.23 milliseconds. Ultimately what I'm trying to say over here is that if you're going to be playing some more hardcore games, you might want to run it on the level 4 mode, while on the level 3 mode it'll be a little bit more appealing for visually appealing games. Now for me to demonstrate this objectively yet again, I've got the UFO ghosting test, and as you can see that through the different level modes, the level 4 or level 3 modes are the ones I'd recommend, with the level 5 mode actually incurring a little bit of inverse ghosting. Now this monitor does also have a blur reduction mode, MPRT, and you can also select the different overdrive modes while in MPRT. This shows a good level of customization. It's worth noting over here that the MPRT levels have got 5 level modes themselves as well. So here with the MPRT ramped up on its maximum level, which is level 5, and the overdrive at level 3 or level 4, you can see over here that the UFO is a lot clearer. Now when it comes to the overall motion clarity, this monitor has got an IPS panel, and the motion clarity is actually pretty decent. I had no issues yet again when it came to registering my input, but sure enough it's not going to compete with some more class-leading IPS monitors, OLED or indeed TNs. But for the grander scheme of things, and specifically the price point of this monitor, I had no issues whatsoever when it came to the overall motion clarity, specifically when utilising MPRT mode. Now with that said, it is worth highlighting that MPRT mode cannot be used simultaneously with adaptive sync technologies, such as AMD FreeSync or NVIDIA G-Sync. Not something that bothers me, but something I thought I should highlight in this video. As for MPRT, it cannot also be used simultaneously with HDR, but that's also no surprise. Now this does actually bring me on to adaptive sync technologies, and here I have got an NVIDIA RTX 3080, and when connected over DisplayPort I had no problems running the NVIDIA Pendulum demo, I didn't incur any tools of black screen issues or flickering. Better still, I was able to run adaptive sync technologies, in other words NVIDIA G-Sync, simultaneously at 1440p at 165Hz, while also enabling HDR. And yes, all these technologies worked in tandem, and yet again I didn't incur any sort of problems. Now the overall HDR experience is somewhat subpar. It's no surprise that this monitor doesn't get over roughly 400 nits, so it's nothing to really shout about. But I do like the fact that the overall HDR colour accuracy was pretty good, and therefore meant that while playing a game such as Destiny 2, I did feel that the HDR experience was a little bit more pleasurable. Given the fact that I do also get slightly higher peak brightness in HDR, it's something that you might want to utilise, at least of course if you have a game or a movie that does indeed support HDR. Speaking about HDR, this perfectly brings me on to today's sponsor. The AOC Q27G3XMN is an affordable 27-inch 1440p 180Hz gaming monitor. It sports a VA panel with mini-LED technology, full array local dimming and display HDR 1000 certification, giving you that lifelike reproduction. 
It's extremely responsive, has minimal inverse ghosting, negligible VA smearing and backlight bleeds, and only small amounts of blooming. The best bit, it costs just £350 in the UK and $280 in the US, making this an absolute bargain. Find out more by watching my detailed review up on your pop-up banner or following the links down in the description below. Now moving back to the HP Omen 27Q, I would like to touch upon console gaming. And here the monitor has got two HDMI 2.0 inputs, which will suffice for you outputting 1440p at 120Hz, be it if you're on Xbox or PlayStation. Now for me, to demonstrate how well this monitor performs, I yet again use the OSRTD tool. And using the Overdrive Level 3, you can see here that the average initial time sat at 4.77, while at Level 4, it goes down to 3.87 milliseconds, but do bear in mind what I mentioned before about the RGB overshoot. Now I did also have it tested at 60Hz, because I know some people are interested about this. And as such, over here on Level 3 mode, it sat at 4.53 milliseconds while on the level 4 mode, it drops down to 3.71 milliseconds. Finally, over here, you can see that the UFO ghosting test actually does do relatively well at 120Hz. However, motion clarity is not as good as its maximum refresh rate. Thankfully, you do have those MPRT modes that you can utilize. Note, MPRT is not available at 60Hz, but that's no surprise given the, how the technology actually operates. Now I would just like to point out that these results were attained at a 1440p resolution, but of course you can run it at 1080p or Full HD if you so wish. But it is worth noting that this monitor will not accept a 4K signal input, unlike some of its key competitors. Something just worth considering, but given that the fact you can actually use 1440p natively, it should be a non-issue. Now the overall gaming experience is actually pretty impressive, but what about when it comes to the overall image quality? Well as a reminder it's got a 1440p resolution, a refresh rate of 165Hz and a flat IPS panel with a matte coating to it. Of course it has got that 27 inch form factor. Now via the monitor's OSD you will be able to notice that there is a standard mode which effectively operates as an sRGB gamut clamp. Now in said mode, I had it tested via my calibrators with a gamut coverage of 98% and a gamut volume of 102.6%. You can see below how it compares to the sRGB standard. As for the overall color accuracy, it is actually pretty impressive, with an average delta E of 1.32 and a maximum of 2.08. Closer to zero is better. Now indeed, this monitor can be used for serious image editing work or video grading. Now as for its tested contrast ratio is a little bit disappointing, specifically for an IPS panel, sitting at 916 to 1. While its measured white point is actually pretty close to the target, at 6235 Kelvin at 100%. Finally, in terms of its gamma curve, it's pretty close to the 2.2 standard. So while the standard mode is certainly appreciated for those people who want to be editing in the sRGB color space, specifically given that you have got full brightness controls, it is worth noting that if you do want a little bit of extra pop on your image, you might want to go for one of the other modes because it unlocks the wider color gamut. And indeed over here via the gaming mode preset, you can see that the gamut coverage and gamut volumes have been positively affected. Now concentrating on the DCI-P3 color space, because that's what the manufacturer advertises, you can see here how it compares to said color space. However, the overall average delta E and the maximum delta E are disappointing at 3.07 and 5.57 respectively. Indeed, this monitor cannot be used for any sort of serious image editing work in the DCI-P3 color space. Now the tested contrast ratio does not change, but the measured white point does slightly shift at 6,272 Kelvin at 100%. Unfortunately here, the gamma curve does not reach the 2.6 standard, which is required for the true DCI-P3 color space. Now with those with a keen eye, you would have clocked in the brightness figures, and indeed over here I had it tested a variety of different modes. In HDR, it got up to 426 nits, while in SDR it's actually pretty impressive at 386 nits, showing that this monitor can be used in a bright sunlit room. In fact, I had it usually operating at 60% brightness. Now in terms of the MPRT modes, as you go up the scale and therefore increasing the overall MPRT effectiveness, you can see over here that it does affect the overall brightness figures, getting all the way down to 100 nits, which I do think is a bit too dim. But nonetheless, if you're going to be playing in a completely pitch black room, you might actually appreciate it. Furthermore, given the fact you'll have that extra bit of motion clarity. As for the overall minimum brightness of this monitor, it does get down all the way to 44 nits, showing great sort of range. On the subject of luminous, let's talk about brightness uniformity. And here across the board, the monitor could have performed a little bit better. I appreciate this is somewhat panel lottery, but this is the results that I attained. As for the overall backlight bleed, I found it perfectly acceptable, even while playing darker games or watching darker movies. 
But of course, if you're going to be sensitive to this, or indeed you're going to be consuming a lot of darker content, then you might want to look at a VA, OLED, or indeed a TN panel instead. Moving swiftly on, let's talk about its build quality. And here, the monitor has got a three-side borderless design with a relatively thin bottom bezel. It's got an all-black finish to it, and I quite like the fact that you've got a square-shaped stand, which is also very sturdy. It provides you height, tilt, and pivot adjustments. It can actually be rotated in both directions. However, it does not have a swivel function built in. It shouldn't be a big issue for most individuals, but of course, if this is a deal breaker, you can replace the built-in stand with a Vita compatible stand, therefore allowing you to mount it on a monitor arm or a multi-monitor setup. Aside from this, there are a few physical buttons positioned at the back right-hand side of the monitor, and these allow you access to the monitor's comprehensively laid out OSD. Indeed, it's actually very intuitive and provides you all the right options that you'll require. Furthermore, you have also got a software which is in form of the Omen Gaming Hub and it allows you a certain degree of customization as well, although it's not anywhere near as comprehensive as the hardware-based OSD. Nonetheless, it's great to see that you have got both options available. Now to conclude, I would like to talk about connectivity, because here you've got a singular 3.5mm jack output, allowing you to plug in your headphones directly onto the monitor, and this can be quite handy because the monitor has not got any built-in speakers. Aside from this, you've got a singular DisplayPort 1.4 input, allowing you the maximum refresh rate and resolution. However, you've got two HDMI 2.0 ports, which will be handy for console gamers, although it's worth noting that if you're going to be connecting this off to a desktop computer or a laptop, you will be limited at 1440p at 144Hz. And indeed, this is due to the limitations of the 2.0 spec. So with all that in mind, would I recommend the HP Omen 27Q? Well, absolutely. I really do love what the manufacturer has done over here. And sure enough, it might not appeal to hardcore competitive gamers due to its refresh rate, but I do think it will suffice for most. Couple that with the fact that you have got a color accurate flat 27 inch IPS panel that runs at 1440p. You've also got a pretty responsive panel with a low input lag and also support for HDR and adaptive sync technologies. All of this coming in at an affordable price of £230 in the UK or $250 in the US and it makes this monitor very easy to recommend and as such it gets my best buy awards. Now of course do consider there are some other monitors out there, albeit at a more expensive price tag, that offer a better set of features, be it display HDR certifications, mini LED technology or indeed that higher refresh rate that certain people will actually be looking for. Some of which I'd recommend will be down description below for your own consideration. Now I'd be curious to know what you make of this monitor down in the comment section below and how you think it compares with some of its key competitors. Of course, if you have enjoyed this detailed independent review, definitely do consider dropping a like, subscribing and hitting that bell notification, all of which would be greatly appreciated and allows me to continue delivering honest reviews like this one. As such, I've been totally dubbed and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves and goodbye.